Hi everyone and welcome to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and I've got Officer Adam Dye with me today and we're going to talk about school safety zones. This is important because we know the school year is right around the corner. So what do we need to know, I guess maybe even as parents dropping off our kids? Well, especially those first few days, uh, the traffic's going to be a little bit heavier. It seems like the parents, more parents drop their kids off than they do throughout the year. But even throughout the year, there's going to be a lot of traffic around our different uh, city schools. Uh, so we need to be aware the speed limits are dramatically reduced, especially if you're on Volunteer Parkway in front of Avoca. Uh, each one of the school zone speed limits is 15, but that's a big drop off right there. Uh, need to be aware of the um, school buses school buses stopping and loading and unloading in the areas you do have to stop for those school buses if you're uh, in, in the vicinity of those uh, whether they're on the side of the road at the school uh, or in the road dropping students off I know I've heard I, I actually had a friend once who kind of pulled up and didn't know that about the school bus and you know one of the teachers came out and was like you can't do that you know thinking well I'm on the other side so you just have to be really aware of kind of the rules and regulations when it comes to school buses and when they're stopping and and definitely slowing down because 15 feels feels slow I think probably to a lot of us so it's good to just slow it down Anything else we need to know about kind of getting this year, school year up and going in terms of some good safety tips? Uh, one, of the, one of the best tips that I could give is just leave a little bit early during this time, uh, especially in the mornings when you've got to be somewhere by a certain time. Leave a little bit early if you can take an alternate route away from one of the schools. I know sometimes that's impossible, but if, if possible, do that because with the uh, traffic lines, you may pull up and have to wait more than one cycle. Of, you may have to stop more than one time, in other words, uh, when you're in front of the school. So it's going to take a little extra time to get somewhere. So leave in the morning with a little extra time and a little extra patience. Are there extra officers on hand during this time once things get going, just directing traffic and getting the flow back up and moving? You will typically see officers in each one of the school zones. Uh, some may be assigned to uh, traffic directing duties. Some may be there uh, running radar. You may have a combination of both. And maybe even some are like the school resource officer that's helping out a little bit during that initial kickoff. Yeah, they will uh, definitely be involved because they know their school better than any uh, of the rest of us. That's great. Uh, well, thank you so much for being on today and sharing that with us. Some really good tips, not just for parents with kids, but also I really like the one about if you're heading to work, just to beware that school is coming up and especially those first couple of weeks can be um, a little slower moving traffic. So good to look at some options to get to work in other directions. So thank great. You. Thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi everyone and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and I've got Dr. Christy Coleman with me today talking to us about back to school reminders. We're on a theme here with our back to school. It's amazing to think that the summer is coming to an end, but it is and we need to be reminded of what do we need to know for back to school. Oh, that's right. We're very excited to welcome students back. Uh, the first day is August 1st and that's an early dismissal day. And for our elementary students, that's 8.10 to 10.10. And for middle school and high school, that's 7.30 to 9.30. Um, so that is an early dismissal day. On Tuesday, August 2nd, that's a teacher work day. And then students are back full time on Wednesday, August 3rd. So on that first day, what do they do in those couple of hours? So they go, they visit, they go to their schedule, meet with homeroom, learn a little bit about expectations. Some schools have some welcome back assemblies. Um, just a lot of excitement in those two hours. Uh, we do our head counts to make sure who is said they were coming or are coming and uh, do our official school head counts. And then the following day when the teachers are just there, what, what kind of a day is that for them? Are they kind of like, okay, now I know my official classroom and I need to, pull the last minute details together. Right, so it is a lot of work getting the classrooms together, the final touches on bulletin boards, and really just um, getting the curriculum and pacing and continue to plan um, to be ready for students. Because I know I've had a lot of people ask me, why did they do that half day and then have a day off and then go back? 
So I was just curious. So really that does go back to our head counts, um, specifically in elementary. Um, we will know on the two hour day if we need to increase the amount of teachers at a school or shift in grade levels based on the number of students that are returning. We have a good idea and we track that all summer long and update our enrollment. Um, but if a teacher does have to move or we need to add a teacher based on increased enrollment, that gives that teacher that day to get prepared for all all the kids to come back the next day. So it's fast paced. I don't want to be that, that teacher. Fast paced word for that, that teacher. That is, that's mm -hmm. a lot. Of, that's, that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's good. It's, it's right around the corner. So if you've got school age kids, definitely put August 1st in your calendar as the day, the big day back. Right. And what about a school supply list? So we have school supply list on all of our uh, school web pages. So if you're attending that school, you can find that on the web pages often, um, the local stores will also have those school uh, supply lists for you as well. And then once you get those, is it best that they bring them on that August 1st day? Um, some schools will put out s different things, but okay. yeah, typically um, bringing them August 1st uh, is a great idea. Um, some, some schools prefer them on the first full day, but I assure you that if you bring them to us, we're not going to send them back. <laughs> <laughs> we know you'll use the glue sticks. <laughs> that's that's right. for sure. Is there anything else you want to tell us about good reminders that we need to know? Sure. So in elementary, our open houses are new this year. We're going to do that prior to the start of school. Okay. And on the J July 28th at 5 o'clock, um, our Avoca and Anderson will have their open house in elementary. And on the July 29th, uh, Fairmount, Hanksfield, and Holston View will have that. Um, so that's a little new for some of our schools. At fourth and fifth graders will also receive laptops at that time. So you're encouraged if you're a fourth and fifth grader, attend that open house and be there at five in order to, so we can distribute those laptops and all the important information so you're aware of how to be involved in our school and support students. That's great, that's always an exciting time and they're figuring out their teachers mm -hmm. and seeing their friends again, so that's right. good to know. Is there anything else that you wanna add while I've got you here? Well, we did, parents did receive an email about uh, critical information that we need for them to fill out. The demographics, you know, um, it's important to keep those phone numbers up to date. If there's an emergency, we need to be able to get in touch with you during the day. And um, so in order for other students to receive their laptops, that will need to be completed. Our um, middle and high school students will get their laptops the first few weeks of school. Perfect. And then I know there's a lot of health forms too, which is always good. So a lot of times you can get, you know, your hearing tested and, you know, the flu shot and all sorts of things that you can sign your, your kids up for. So I'm sure um, check your email box if you haven't seen it. Right. Uh, check your email. We do have a lot of that digital information now, but we will still have papers that go home at the beginning of the year that are very critical and to the success of uh, the school year making things run smoothly and, and that communication. I will say if you have an elementary student and they're getting on the bus the first day on that two hour day, uh, make sure your child knows that they're riding the, back, the bus back home or if they're a car rider or you're picking them up, that two hour day is different for a lot of families and, and that full first day of school for those primary students. So, you know, it never hurts to write down your address and let the teacher know and those kindergarten, first, second graders, how they're getting home and, and make sure you communicate with them. Because they sometimes say, I don't know, I'm just here, <laughs> right? I I'm love here. that, yes. Right, so, so we need to just open up those lines of communication as this school sure. year gets underway. Mm -hmm. oh, well, thank you so much for coming and sharing all that with us. We really appreciate it. We will be right back. Hi everyone and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and I have got Nicole Gardner with me today and Maggie Dean and they are visiting from the Quillen College of Medicine and we're talking about the Quillen 100 which has really only been going on a couple of years but it definitely has like picked up some stamina and is an exciting event that we've got in our area. Who wants to start and tell me about what is the Quillen 100? So the Quillen 100 like you said was started in 2019 and it's a cycling series. We've added a couple new things this year. Um, it's a full day of events, just kind of celebrating the community and giving people opportunities to be active and just enjoy the area. And so the day is starting with a scenic ride, which is a 42 mile ride. Wow. 
um, starts at the Speedway, goes through Tennessee, Virginia, under this cool sign in downtown Bristol, and then finishes with a lap on the track oh, um, at, at the Speedway. And then there's a 5K run walk um, for people who want to, you know, walk with strollers or run. It's very low key. You can go at your own pace or you can, you know, try to get a PR. And then the Quill 100 relay race is a more competitive 100 lap race. And do the races take place at the Speedway? They do, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's so fun. It's always so fun to do anything at the Speedway. I know, it's amazing. So that's great. That is something that's new, because I was thinking, oh, the Pool in 100 is the cycling, but now we've added in some opportunities for other people that maybe aren't avid cyclists. Exactly, yeah. I think we're trying to reach kind of everybody. So with the 5K, you can just, you know, you can walk it, take your time. Um, with, the, with the scenic ride, you can go at your own pace, just kind of enjoy the area. And then we also have that competitive ride for those who want to like really get after it in the afternoon. That's great. How exciting. So when does this take place? So it's August 20th, okay. um, this August, and the scenic ride will start at 8.30. The 5K will start right after at 9 a.m. And then the Quill 100 will be that afternoon. Okay, great. And then if you want to register and participate, how do you do that? You just go to thequill100.com and it'll have all the information to sign up. Um, there's also just free admission if you want to come and just participate in the food trucks, bring your kids for all the activities there. Okay, great. Now, Nicole, I know you're in charge of marketing, <laughs> and that am. is a really big job. So how have you been marketing this? Well, we've got you on here today, so that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, been doing this. We have an Instagram, we have a Facebook, a Twitter. We also have a website, The Quillen 100. If you Google us, all of that will come up. Um, been handing out flyers, just going to different races, talking to people, pretty much just trying to get the word out through the cycling communities and the running communities. And I'm sure it's been going really well because it's a perfect time of year to do this, too. I think, you know, people are, aren't traveling as much, you know, kids are back in school, everyone's getting back into a routine. And what a nice way to, like, enjoy, you know, before Labor Day, the outdoors and just the beautiful area that we have here. And I love that it's transformed into this scenic route, which I think is really appealing because we really do live in a pretty area of the country. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the scenic ride goes, just to say a little more about the scenic ride itself, it goes through um, South Holston Lake, through downtown Bristol, King University, and it goes through two states, Tennessee and then into the tip of Virginia. So you really do get to see a lot in that 42 mile loop, as well as see the speedway close up on that final lap. So. That's great. Well, that's exciting. Anything else, ladies, that y'all want to share? We also have a health fair that goes on throughout the day because um, we wanted to promote healthy living through encouraging people to cycle and run, but also to teach them like how to keep your heart healthy, things like that. So that'll be going on throughout the day in the infield of the Speedway. So if you're not a cycler or a runner, you can also come and just participate in that. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So you'll have like little booths probably set up where yeah. you can learn about nutrition and health and wellness and, and mm -hmm. all of that good stuff. And activities for kids as well. Yeah. yeah. And why, why did you start this? Why did this Quillen 100 take place? Was it just kind of as a fundraiser or just as a way to promote health? Is that is Yeah, that the I goal? think it started by just realizing what a great area we're in and wanting to, like I said, kind of make an event to one, just celebrate the area and the people there and then just promote healthy living. Mm -hmm. Like have a place where people can come and exercise. It's easier to exercise with people. So have a place where people can come and ride their bikes. Now they can come and run, walk. And then also there's food trucks, you know, face paint for the kids. Mm -hmm. also, there's a kid's ride as well. They get to ride around the track for free. Um, so there's activities really for the whole family. And so I think we really just wanted to promote the, the awesome community that we're in. And the great College of Medicine that we yeah. are so lucky to have here. <laughs> yeah. So I love that. Well, ladies, thanks for being on today. And thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.